Hi, I'm Martin, and I'm going to in this video. I'm going to be carrying out a service on the um, the regulator of my Virarc HW100. I'm greatly indebted to other people that have put uh, information onto YouTube and uh, to the Virarc Owners Club um, because they've given me the confidence to um, carry out this service myself rather than. Um, go through all the hassle of sending the gun back via um, a registered firearms dealer to hold cartridge. Um, here's hoping it's all going to go well, but um, please come along on the journey with me. Um, thanks to all those that have um, previously done work though, I've learned a lot from you and I hope um, you can now learn something in return from me. I'll be trying to explain uh, as I find out more about how the gun actually operates, the regulator particularly. Um, I'll try and give my thoughts on that as well as I go along. So that's enough from me. Let's get on with the uh, strip down and uh, here's hoping it goes well and that uh, we all learn something. See you later. A serious warning before engaging on any work on this or any other PCP gun. Remove the cylinder don't do any work with the cylinder attached, even if you think it's down to a fairly low pressure. The forces at work with a, a cylinder at 200 bars just don't bear thinking about. So please, you know, be safe. Um, watch all the videos on YouTube carefully before um, starting your work. Okay, lecture over. Let's get on with it. I'm a great fan of the FireArc HW100 and this particular gun has given me um, faithful service for the past five years um, and I've really enjoyed it. However, I've had one or two issues recently and it's due for a service. The, the latest problem I had with it was that um, with the um, cylinder charged, the gun cocked and when the hammer fired, it was striking the valve, but not releasing the air through the transfer port to drive the pellet out of the barrel. My, my thoughts on this are that um, the regulator has failed, uh, basically in the open position. So high pressure air from the cylinder is actually uh, filling the small reservoir and um, there's too much pressure behind the uh, main valve and consequently it can't open when it's struck by the hammer. So I've um, decided to take um, the ball by the horns and strip this gun. I think this will be the first time this gun has ever been opened. Here's a few of the seals um, received in the uh, kit from HW100 Tuning. And you can see that uh, they're all packed individually into polythene bags with a label on each bag, um, very nicely done. And they've even included that small bag of um, Molly Coat 111 um, for lubricating the, um, the seals other than the um, PTFE seal. Here's some more of the seals from that kit from HW100 Tuning. And I also have purchased the um, pressure test gauge and the uh, regulator test port seal kit which replaces the um, slightly Heath Robinson looking HW100 um, seal which composes of a, a hex um, stud and a ball bearing. I'll be attaching this um, pressure test gauge to the port there after this work is completed so that um, I can properly set the regulator pressure and of course I will be chronographing the gun after all of this work to ensure that it does remain below the legal 12 foot pounds limit here in the UK. As you can see I've already um, Remove the gun from the stock, uh, remove the um, scope and mounts. I've just placed a piece of tape here 
um, on the rail to um, assist me with putting the scope back on in the same position and hopefully minimising the amount of work I have to do um, as I start setting the gun up again. Right, first thing now is to um, remove the barrel and, and the trigger unit to make it easier to work on. Not sure if these will show up on the camera, but I've put a couple of little um, felt tip marks along the breech block and onto the barrel to act as witness marks uh, to aid me realigning the barrel in its original position. Now this is the small uh, hex stud that has to be removed and uh, it does have to come out a fair way I've learned from other people's videos on YouTube such as barrel should now be free to, to withdraw and it is. There is a seal on the end of the barrel which will need to be replaced. Okay next I want to take off the, uh, the trigger block and it's a question of these four millimeter bolts here. I crack this one loose, both of them loose before turning on the camera, but they were exceedingly tight and actually um, opened with quite a snap. Okay, and there's the whole trigger assembly removed. Okay, next thing to do is to um, separate the hammer assembly here and cocking lever etc. probe from the breech block and regulator here. And that's just these two bolts. Really, I've got some better Allen keys than this um, with the ball head on them. Okay, I've um, withdrawn those bolts now. So the breech block and regulator block here should come apart, which it's doing nicely. And now we've got our action into its two halves. I'm not intending to do anything on the hammer spring at this time because I would rather um, service this part where I know I've got an issue or I strongly suspect I have an issue. Um, so I'd rather work on that, do the full service there and then reassemble it and do some chrono work and then uh, possibly move on to the hammer assembly if I do need to um, adjust the hammer spring tension but I'm hoping that um, I can get it back um, where I want to shoot it um, at about 780 feet per second in uh, 177 with um, JSB exact um, 8.4 so hopefully um, I can get there just on adjusting the pressure on the regulator port here correctly. Okay, now to remove the um, the bridge block and uh, valve assembly. Uh, these were really quite tight. Um, I know what Simon Hibbert said about um, being careful not to over torque screws into these aluminium blocks and I think he's quite right. But I have actually found that these to be very tight. I'd already previously loosened them and they went with quite a pop when the, uh, when the bolts actually released. You can see there that the uh, spring of the valve unit forced the block up as I released the screws. Let's see if I can bring it out in one piece. There's the spring on the end of the valve assembly. Uh, I'll remove that. There's the breech block and seal at that end. And 
it is, you can see, really quite, quite mangled there. I'll just point out that seal. Around there looks really quite mangled. And as Simon pointed out, this is a, a one-time one -time seal, not reusable. And of course, I do have the replacement in the HW100 tuning kit. And there it is. And down at the bottom, I don't know if we can make it out on the camera, but down at the bottom there's the PTFE valve guide which I'll also be replacing. I'll just need to ease that out of there. And um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. But... OK, to take out the regulator we need to put a 5mm Allen key in and turn it out. And it'd be difficult to see inside, I think, but try and position the light. And there you can see the uh, stack of washers that forms the regulator. And we need to remove those now. That's all of them. And I've just taken them out onto the Allen key just to retain them all in that original settings. Now to remove the uh, main valve assembly. I've got to take this brass piece out here with a 10mm socket. Now, one of the guides I've seen, it appears that that comes out easily. But in fact, I found that um, I had to hold the... Uh, block down onto the edge of a, a tabletop and really apply quite a lot of torque to get that to move. So I have actually moved it once and now I can now screw it out. But um, I was wondering whether to uh, give up. It was, getting, you know, it was so ridiculously tight. But uh, now I've got them all the way out of course. There's a seal there which has um, actually become quite flattened, I can see here. I'm not sure if you're about to pick it up with the camera. But it uh, no longer looks completely round. And that is uh, horribly gummed up as you can see. I've just pushed the piston through. And quite a, quite a plug of uh, silicone grease. But at least it came free. You can see the uh, the large seal here down at the bottom. Having removed the regulator piston there is still this sleeve inside um, that the piston runs in and that needs to be removed as well because there's an o-ring on the outside of that. And From this side I'm just pressing through with a couple of mil Allen key. And now it has dropped free. There it is. And there's the old O ring. And 
that was sitting there, that's good. So we've got that out as well. And on reassembly, it's going to go back in with the O ring going in first. First of all, I'm going to give the block a good clean up now and then I'll start to clean all the components and put the regulator back together. I um, should have mentioned of course that um, this little sleeve that the um, piston, the regulator piston runs inside um, is only um, fitted on the newer version of the um, HW100 regulator block. In the original version I believe the piston uh, ran um, in the block itself rather than inside the uh, this uh, sleeve. Well I've given uh, the inside of the regulator a clean out. Um, uh, want not waste not, I'm using an old t-shirt but hey it is through to the loom and I've just cleaned inside with that removed an awful lot of uh, gunk and of course in all seriousness I will be um, cleaning again inside before reassembly I'll be making a final clean with um, a white limb free cloth okay, so I'm now going to remove the pressure test port there we are again do you hear the click there I'm finding that all the uh, uh, bolts they're all done up extremely firmly and there's quite a snap as they undo and then underneath, if we can just see it down there is the ball bearing and underneath that there is a, uh, a small washer which will be deformed I'll see if the bearing will come out ah, it did drop down dropping down to the end of the um, hole but not coming any further which is what other people have said I'm just going to um, try with a magnet and see if a magnet would pull it all the way through um, I can actually of course go on the inside and pop an allen key through from the inside to push it out but for people who have um, been struggling with trying to remove this ball when all they need to do is um, reset the regulator pressure then it might be useful to find out if um, the strong magnet idea that I've come up with will work to remove that. So I'll give that a try um, in a second and over here somewhere, there it is, I'm actually going to replace it with this um, kit that comes that I've purchased from HW100 tuning, sorry, um, which consists of an o-ring and this brass plug which replaces the original so the um, the ball bearing becomes completely redundant and in future if I need to um, reset the regulator as I'm expecting to um, play around a bit with the regulator pressure just to achieve the best shot count and um, obviously the right um, legal uh, ensuring I'm inside the legal limit I'll be starting off with um, a regulator pressure that everybody seems to um, recommend including on the HW100 forum uh, which is in this case I've got um, the long barrel version of the 177 so I'll be setting the regulator um, and aiming um, at uh, 90 bar when I fit this pressure gauge into this test port on reassembly Right, I'm back. I've just been out to see a, um, pick up a, a magnet. This is one of these um, very powerful near medium magnets, and I just thought I'd see. Yes, the ball just leapt out to it. So there's a little tip for you: if um, if you are using the original method of sealing the um, the pressure test port, then uh, that, that's the um, regulator pressure test port and you're struggling with getting this uh, ball out rather than having to strip the 
um, entire regulator which I've seen people um, resorting to in the past on YouTube videos. Um, try the magnet tip. Um, just make sure you get yourself a really nice powerful near medium magnet and the ball should leap out as that one did. And now I need to inspect down in the uh, bottom of the port and I'm expecting to see a, um, a rather damaged um, o-ring and yes I can see it there and so I'll be removing that now. I'm using a pin to um, Tease that old o-ring out. You can see that it is indeed quite um, messed up from the pressure it's been under. It's completely deformed. So that one goes away into the rubbish. Now I just need to put a spot of this um, molly coat onto the new o-ring and the new um, Pressure test port seal. And now that just goes back into the uh, port. Before I do put it in though, I'll just give it a quick clean. Okay, so that's cleaned down now inside and I've blown through into the transfer port as well. So I can now fit this plug. I won't bother pinching that down because I'll be taking it out to um, put the pressure gauge on later. Okay, now to remove the um, O-ring from the piston sleeve to um, reduce the, any risks, I'll try and just use my fingernail. See if I can get it to come off with a fingernail and it will. Okay, so there's my old seal, and here's the new one, Piston Sleeve Bush 2674A. So I'll just get a bit of molly coat onto the, onto the o-ring. Apply someone onto the Piston Sleeve. Done. I'm ready to replace into the block. Ho oh, oh. ho, when I just picked up the block again I realised that I'd put the, um, the replacement seal for the pressure test port into the um, fixing hole which is used for securing the action back into the uh, stock. So don't do what I did. <laughs> put it into the right place. Now I'll give the uh, regulator piston itself uh, a clean. don't know if the camera will pick this up but it really is quite heavily coated in um, uh, silicon grease, presumably molly coat from the uh, original factory assembly. And of course I will give that final clean using the lint free. What I can see there is slight, slight scuffing on the, the finish just in one place there. I don't know if the camera can pick it up at all, but I can't feel any roughness, but um, of course oh, it's on the other side as well, so it's not as though it's just on one, one side. Right, well, I'll remove the o-ring there eventually. I'd rather do that though and fight with it with my fingernail than um, risk damaging the surface with, by scratching it with a pin. Again, trusty through to the loom time and then a final clean and pop the new um, new seal on. And here it is, there's the new seal piston, uh, regulator piston 2668. Again I'll pop that into give it a squidge of molly slip no, not molly coat rather just rub that off. I don't want it to be as um, well coated, shall we say, as the, the factory. Okay, here's the cleaned piston. I've got the, um, the excess of that molly slip off and I'll pop 
on into the groove. Again, just using my fingernails to avoid any damage. There's the piston ready to go back in. So here's the uh, main inlet valve. There's the piston. It seats into that hole. You can see it doesn't quite close. And now there's spring pressure. You see the spring pressure there. Opening and closing the valve. With the Belleville washers bearing down on the end of this, the Belleville washers form a very powerful spring and they're pushing the valve, that's how it operates. Air from the cylinder enters at that end. There's a, a sprung valve inside, a ball valve by the feel of it, and there's the piston on the end, or the plunger on the end of this piston, which pushes and operates that valve. Right, so it's to reassemble now the piston sleeve, the um, O-ring end will need to go into the um, block first. But before I do that, I'll just introduce the piston back into the piston sleeve. Of course, it's going to go in that way round, so that the plunger on the end, which operates the inlet valve, which I've just been showing you, is facing back towards this end of the block. those and it's sliding in there. And now to introduce this. Now there is a hole here in the end of the sleeve and I don't honestly know that it makes any difference. I've had a good look and I can't see. It seems to line up. There's a groove all the way around. I can see on the inside of the um, block whether cylinder is going to, uh, the sleeve is going to go rather. Anyway, I'll just reintroduce that. Get it lined up square on and it's going to slide in hopefully. Yeah, that's it. And that's back in position. Next, I'll need to put the new um, inlet valve uh, o-ring seal in there. For some reason um, the bag is labelled 266 older model but I've done a visual comparison against the um, the original one which I'm going to replace and it seems identical so I'm going to put that to the old one to one side. Here's the new one. I'll just lubricate it and drop it in there. I transferred a little bit of um, molly coat onto it. Now I'm just going to place it using a small Allen key. And that's dropped back in place nicely. Now I just need to make sure that the this bush that the sleeves sits in, uh, the inlet valve sits in, it's tight down, it is, and I need to fit um, the new main valve inlet washer on the end there as well. So that's um, 2974B. I'm going to give that a final ten, um, tension actually with the uh, wrench handle because, as I said, they were fitted very tight from the factory, so 
I'll replicate that. Just a quick look at these um, Belleville washers before I um, reassemble. If I try and tease them apart, you'll see that there are actually 16 washers in four groups. So if I tease apart one of the groups, you'll see that they are. I've um, had these all apart and um, wiped them, but difficult to tease them apart now. But there are other diagrams online and um, on the HW100 forum that's showing the these washers. But essentially, they are a dished washer, but it's made out of um, um, spring steel. So, because they're dished and they're cupped together, you've, when you squeeze them, you've effectively got an incredibly strong spring. Now. When they're in position in the block, they're pushing directly onto the end of that piston, which is operating the inlet valve. So, and of course, on the other side of that inlet valve, you've got um, cylinder pressure air, which is um, forcing that inlet valve closed again. So, um, this essentially, this spring is the adjustment is so that the piston will um, open or close that valve and keep the uh, regulated pressure at your 90 bar. Um, it wasn't clear to me before I stripped this down how it actually worked, but I think um, I think I have it now. I've um, taken all of these apart carefully. Now if you're going to do that obviously be very careful so that you do assemble them in the correct order which is with the dish going that way two of them and then the dish going that way two of them and then that repeated four times. Okay and if you squeeze them together you'll see the distinct gaps between the groups of four. Okay, I'm going to now reintroduce these into the uh, regulator block. If you can see down into there, there's the piston in place. And uh, the washers just sit directly down into that. So I'm just using that so they all go back in in the same way. They're now in place. I'll just leave that up rather than temp fate from to fall out. And here's the um, the uh, tension adjuster itself, and that's obviously the flat surface bearing down on the inside and the hex on the outer side. Now there is a groove in this, um, clearly made to, to take an O-ring, but when I took it apart, there was no O-ring fitted from the factory. An O-ring is supplied in the um, in the uh, hw100tuning.co.uk kit 2672 which corresponds um, to the diagram and that is shown on the or next to adjacent to the adjuster 2670 so I'm going to uh, just molly slip molly coat that rather and uh, install that as well so I am going slightly off piste here by, by fitting this because as I said it wasn't there on the uh, on the original. So whether that got missed off in the factory or I don't know. Okay. There's a bit of tension there just as the O-ring goes into the block. I haven't actually started to compress the washers yet. And there's the start of the washers. Okay. That now is the um, regulator back together again. Um, I'll work on the, um, the valve assembly next. And then it'll be time to uh, actually refit and pressure test. 
Now, just thought I'd say on the inlet valve, you've got this little O-ring at this end um, of the inlet valve, which is um, fits inside the cylinder. Now, I didn't um, replace that um, this time. It's not that I forgot. Um, I've deliberately not replaced it because um, I have um, an A&M aluminium cylinder and the A&M cylinder, um, great product, but it does not have um, a, a valve on it that, um, as the um, original fire arc cylinders do. So it means that when you um, unscrew the cylinder out of here, you're releasing um, the cylinder's pressure and it tends to um, chew up that o-ring there so there's no point in replacing it at the moment because I'll, I'll probably have the cylinder on and off several times whilst I'm um, adjusting the regulator and I've only got a finite supply of those um, o-rings however I did get um, new ones and I, uh, a new one in the kit and I also um, invested in another pack from um, hw100tuning.co um, and I'll fit that at the end when I'm reassembling for the final time hopefully and uh, the cylinder won't be removed again. It's only really an issue when uh, you have to remove the cylinder under pressure. Because um, the regulator wasn't working on this gun um, that's I was having to uh, undo it. Uh, I couldn't release the pressure slowly by firing the gun. Well, next I'll start on the cleaning up the valve assembly and getting that ready. I did have a, a quick play with that off camera and um, I immediately found that um, it was very difficult to remove the both the um, breech seal the, where the um, probe seals against it and also on the inside to get the PTFE valve stem guide out uh, which is um, a, a hard PTFE um, o-ring and I um, played around with the hook and um, couldn't get either out so um, I'll be experimenting on that and um, tell you if I can find a way of getting it out successfully without um, you know I, I don't want to be um, rough with it in any way because I can't afford to risk um, any scratches. Um, I'll also be cleaning up around the this um, bevel here which mates with that section there of the valve, main valve, and that obviously needs to seal very well otherwise you could get um, uh, a leak there. Sorry about that. Um, that's Microsoft reminding me that they've got an update for me again. Um, so I'll be cleaning up very carefully around these and then spinning them, spinning the valve when I put it back in to try and ensure that um, I've got a seat, that it seats well and the valve seals. Um, on the um, HW100 forum it mentions about the roughness of the end of this spring where they've just roughly ground it off and true enough this one is the same, it's ground so I will give that a very uh, light polish on some um, thousand grade um, wet and dry emery paper. Other than that it's, um, it's a little bit dirty and just needs a, a clean. My main problem is um, getting out these o-rings so I'll come back and let you know if I have any luck. Well I've had a very um, frustrating time trying to get the breech seal out. Uh, so a little o-ring that sits down just there which is what the uh, probe comes in against and, and seals against and if that is leaking of course um, even slightly you'll get inconsistent um, shots with varying muzzle velocity. Um, so I was determined to get it out and I followed advice um, seen on um, 
the HW100 or the sorry the um, the Virac Owners Club um, website, which recommended actually pushing a pin into the O-ring itself. Of course, you know I was conscious of being um, as careful as possible because I wouldn't want to introduce any scratches um, there that could affect the seal. But I think that eventually came out and after um, a very um, frustrating time probing, putting the uh, pin into it etc, it started to uh, turn around inside its groove. Um, but eventually it just suddenly popped and was um, down there in the aperture um, side on and I was able to pop it through. So. Um, what can I say there? It's um, it's surprisingly challenging to get that O-ring out, but um, don't lose your patience. Just persevere, and eventually, out it does pop. Um, I'm also having a similar challenge with the PTFE um, O-ring that sits down at the end of the. Um, valve seat so that's where the valve sits and um, that o-ring does need to keep the valve um, running true into the seat so I don't want any slop in there so I really would like to change that as well I've got it as part of the, the kit um, but so far it's um, coming out has eluded me. I haven't actually yet tried to stick in a pin in, but um, I'm just going to have a, another look at the the replacement one that I've got in the kit, and uh, they are a much more much harder material. Here it is. So it's um, a totally different beast to a, a normal O-ring, and. Um, I'm not sure how I'd get on with trying to uh, put a pin down there and jab it with a pin. Um, and of course it's um, it's one of those things where I could actually leave it in place, but if I damage it trying to get it out, then I'm scuppered. The HW100 is a beautifully made um, gun. There's no two ways about it. The machining is um, nothing short of uh, superb throughout. Um, What's quite surprising I'm finding it on this um, strip down is how simple it is to strip down. I'm having some frustration with extracting um, stubborn O-rings, um, particularly the PTFE um, O-ring from the valve stem, um, the 2655D uh, PTFE valve stems, um, which is a PTFE O-ring. Um, but other than that, um, a selection of uh, simple Allen keys will suffice. Um, Ball-ended Allen keys uh, would be much more convenient, and I still can't find the, the set I bought recently. Um, a few dressmakers' pins. I've um, formed a couple of them into hooks and uh, softened the point on them so they're not going to scratch. Um, Toothpicks have come in very handy for uh, picking out um, O-rings and generally uh, arranging things. Um, uh, a near-medium powerful magnet, very useful for extracting the ball from the um, pressure test port, the regulator pressure test port. Um, a 10mm socket and a good wrench, wrench handle on it because it was very tight. Um, again, just to stress how surprised I was to find how tight um, most of the fixtures and fittings on this gun are. Um, the other essentials are things like this, a very good light source, and uh, a magnifying, a desk magnifying lamp, because um, if you're like me and your eyesight is beginning to go a little, then um, a magnifier will really help. 
Uh, of course, you couldn't do anything without a piece of old T-shirt. And to finish cleaning process, so always using a good quality lint-free uh, cloth. Um, I'm using um, Napier gun oil, um, which um, is generally only a, a drop applied to a cloth and then wipe off again. Um, I also for f um, a good big fan of GT85 spray cleaner um, with PTFE and I've used this successfully for lubricating pellets too. People may um, throw their hands up in horror but it actually works well. I find a small spray of um, you know, literally a couple of dabs of GT85 um, gently move the pellets around so they will become coated with it and then leave the uh, lid off the tin for a couple of days uh, to ensure all the solvent is evaporated and you're left with um, a pellet which is dry to the touch doesn't foul up your fingers or the breech of the gun um, but it has a PTFE lubricating coating left on it. 